In the name of God, the holy and undivided Trinity, amen. This is a rather troubling passage from Mark's gospel that we have this morning. Doesn't necessarily make it fun for preachers, (laughs) but we're going to make it fun anyway. (laughs) I think I want to start with what Jesus is saying, pointing to, I think, the reason he came into the world. And when he says in his parables, after how can the house stand if it's divided, how can Satan stand against Satan? And then Jesus says, if you want to plunder a strong man's house, you first have to tie up the strong man. And then the house can be plundered. And I want to propose the possibility that that's exactly why Jesus came into the world, to bind Satan and steal his stuff, (laughs) which did not belong to Satan in the first place. That's one of the more ancient, scripturally rooted theories of the atonement, predates substitutionary atonement that's so popular in Reformation circles by, oh, a good 1,500 years or so. The idea of the ransom theory that the work Jesus is doing is to bring us back, to trick Satan, to pay a price to Satan, to get back what belongs to God. So that's what I want us to keep in mind. The work of the kingdom looks like that, tying up a strong man so you can steal his stuff. (laughs) And Jesus has been proclaiming the good news of the kingdom since the first chapter of Mark, and we're only three chapters in at this point, and a lot has happened. But the first thing Jesus says in his public ministry is, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Repent and believe in the good news. And it just keeps going. And how that kingdom work begins to look is like good news to the poor. And Jesus casts out demons, and Jesus heals the sick. When we last left off the story last week, Jesus was healing on the Sabbath. And then the lectionary skips some verses. I don't think for any nefarious reasons this time, but it it helps to have context. Between last week's gospel lesson and this morning's, Jesus has continued casting out demons. The crowds have gotten so large that he can't even, he's he's afraid he's going to get trampled to death tells his disciples to bring him a boat because he doesn't want to get crushed by the crowds and keeps casting out demons and the unclean spirits say, you are the son of God. And Jesus silences them because I really do believe that Jesus silences the demons from proclaiming the good news because he really wants us to hear the good news from him. It's almost like Jesus is saying, don't steal my thunder, demons. <laughs> Don't post on your Facebook before I have a chance to post on my Facebook. (laughs) Let me share this good news. And so people thought he was out of his mind. And they called his family to him, and they came to try to get him. You got to calm down, son. You you, you can't be, you're you're stirring people up. And y'all, that's what the kingdom of God does, is stir us up and stir the world up because we have grown so accustomed to aligning our values with the ruler of this world, that strong man that Jesus came to tie up and steal his stuff, including us, bring us back. We have aligned our values with the ways of this world, with greed and with power with knowledge that we miss the point that God's good news, that Jesus' good news looks very different. God's good news, Jesus' good news undermines the ways of this world where we have to be the strongest and the richest and the smartest and the bestest. Bestest is not a word 
that works well in theology or grammar, either one. <laughs> what we're called to do is to proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God has come near to us in Christ. The kingdom of God is undermining the ways of this world. And it made Jesus look crazy. And if we're doing it right, it makes us look crazy. <laughs> and so the scribes came from Jerusalem. And they say he's, he's been possessed by Beelzebul, and that's how he's casting out these demons. And that's when Jesus says, how can Satan cast out Satan? The house will divided cannot stand. The kingdom divided cannot stand. And then he goes on to say probably one of the most troubling things that Jesus says, even more troubling than, you know, saying that's, you know, my real mother and brothers and sisters are right here doing the work of the kingdom. We'll get to that in a minute. But more troubling than that is that we can utter all sorts of blasphemies. We can utter all sorts of impieties and we can be forgiven. But the one thing that we can't be forgiven for is if we utter blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And I'm curious, what does that mean? Because you all know I kind of think God's grace and God's mercy and God's love is the bottom line of the gospel. And if we're not proclaiming that, we're not doing it right. And so when Jesus says this, I really do think he's talking more about the way we are than about the way God is. So what does it mean that we've committed an eternal sin that can't be forgiven? I suspect that it means if we go that far, that we are attributing to Satan the work of the Holy Spirit, we are probably so clueless so blinded, so enamored of the ways of this world and the ways of the ruler of this world that we can't even realize that we have a problem. We can't even see that we need to be forgiven. And if we can't even see that we need to be forgiven, we're not going to be forgiven. It has nothing to do with God's willingness to forgive us. God has all the time in the world. I suspect that God has all the mercy and all the grace and all the love that God needs to wait out our blasphemies and our impieties and our rebellions and our addictions to the ways of this world. God can wear us down through time. <laughs> God is just that patient and just that loving and just that kind, merciful, forgiving, full of grace, full of love, that even our most severe sins can't stand. Even our worst days can be turned to good for God's glory. No matter what we've done, no matter what we've said, no matter how much we love the ways of this world and the ways we've always done it, God can wait that out. God can bring us home. And that's the bottom line message of the kingdom of heaven is we are all Welcome to come home. But it's hard, especially if we can't even see that there's a problem. If we can't even see that this way that we have come to trust so much might be the very thing that is causing us harm, might be the very thing that is keeping us from making that step. And so we can learn we can learn a lot from our brothers and sisters in 12-step programs. Step one is always step one. 
And it is the most, I was about to say, I was about to say a cuss word in my sermon. (laughs) It is the most difficult. Step one is the hardest one. But it involves recognizing that there is a problem recognizing that there is a sin that we need to confess, recognizing that we don't have the power to do this ourselves, that it's been God the whole time. It's been Jesus showing up the whole time. It's been the Holy Spirit showing up the whole time and saying to us, there is new life in the kingdom. There is renewal in the kingdom. There is restoration in the kingdom. There is an abundance of grace and love and joy in the kingdom. And what are y'all waiting for? Let's go out and do the work of the kingdom of God. It's come near to us, this close to us, as close as our breath, as close as our heartbeat. That's how close the kingdom of God is to us, because it comes to us in Jesus comes to us in the Holy Spirit and it remains with us and says come on let's go repent turn around and go the other way and believe this good news and share this good news proclaim this good news let this good news be who you are And if we are people who embrace or let ourselves be embraced by the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, God's love, God's grace, God's forgiveness, God's mercy, all those things, we realize they're more than just words. It's in just pretty words we say on Sunday. These aren't just lovely prayers in the prayer book. This is who we really are. And it begins with step one. We admitted that we were powerless. We admitted that we were not in control. We admitted that we really did need Jesus all along. Amen.